Sweet. Maura, can you guys see that? Yes, we can. Awesome. All right. So welcome to the OPSU College Student Success Webinar. We are going to be going over uh, what a college start is going to look like for you guys, kind of the, the pieces that you're going to need to concern yourselves with over the next uh, two weeks or so as we kind of transition you into college, and then what you can expect as you get started into college and continue out through your academic journey. So uh, that's going to be kind of what we cover. We got a lot of information to go over. Um, so if you guys, uh, I think I kind of have told most of you this, but just place yourselves on mute and um, so that's so there's no background information going on. And then as we go through, if you have questions, feel free to chat us or um, we'll, we'll pause for questions. And we want to make sure that we get you guys all the information that you need to get started. But uh, before we do that, we always like to take a pause right here and say congratulations to everybody on this phone call. Um, you have completed an incredible step in your life and in your academic journey by coming back into school, uh, coming into an online format that you may not have been familiar with and coming back and graduating high school. Um, and we wanna congratulate everybody on this phone call. You guys are all high school graduates. It's a huge step and we are really, really proud of you. Graduation Alliance is proud of you as students and as people um, about everything that you've done and had to go through to get to this point. So congratulations. Uh, we're, we're really excited that you guys have come this far and we're excited to take you into the next step, which is what we're gonna be kind of focusing on here is now that you've completed the first step, we're gonna kind of continue on into the academic journey and, and explore more of the academic spectrum. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of jump into it. We have a lot of stuff to go over. Um, so here's kind of an outline of the, the main topics that we're gonna be covering. Uh, first, we're going to kind of cover the financial aid process, which is kind of the start of uh, getting enrolled into college. The next thing we're going to do is talk about academic advising and registering for your classes. We're going to talk about ordering textbooks as well. And then we're going to kind of go over some scheduling and other details. With that being said, um, there are three major themes that we're going to cover in this presentation that are going to carry on into college and that you're going to find as you go through college. The first major theme is taking responsibility for your education. So we're leveling up. You guys, we're taking the next step here. And um, in college, you are very, very, very much more responsible for the different pieces of your education than maybe you were in high school. Uh, we're gonna hit this a lot as we go through. So we're gonna kind of elaborate on this more as we go on. But uh, taking responsibility for your education, your finances, and things like that is going to be a major theme of what we're doing here in college. You are going to be expected to step up and take more responsibility for completing uh, some of these different pieces. It's not just going to be done for you. So we'll go over that in just a little bit. Uh, the second major theme that you're going to find is starting early. So for those of you that are procrastinators like me, um, college is going to eat you alive if you try and procrastinate your way through it. And I found this out the hard way. Um, I procrastinated for like my whole first year and it really hurt me. Um, and so my advice to you is to not procrastinate, get things done early and make sure that you are planning ahead. Okay. Uh, starting early, getting things done early and not holding things off to the last minute is critical to your success in college. So if you are a procrastinator or you are someone that does put things off to the last minute, right now would be a great time to start looking at what you can do to take action against you know putting things off finally and this one is super super important um your attitude needs to be in place for this and what do i mean by that well i have a lot of students that come in and their attitude towards college goes something like well i'm gonna try it and we'll see what happens if you are saying that to yourself, you are automatically admitting right from the start that if things get tough, you're going to quit is basically what that that sentence translates to is, well, we'll see how it goes. That that can't be your attitude if you're going to do this, because I'm here to tell you right now, part of my job is to make sure you're successful in college. And I'm here to tell you right now, it's going to get hard. It will get tough. Um, and the difference between people that graduate and people that drop out is their attitude and persistence. It's the people that come into this saying, no matter what, I'm going to work through whatever struggles I may encounter to reach the finish line. So if your attitude is, well, we'll see, and meh, maybe I'll see how it goes. You're already admitting that you're going to quit when it gets tough. And that, that attitude will not get you through to the end. 
And if there's one thing that's really important to understand about college, uh, it's that you need to reach the end. Okay. Uh, this is not a, like you get partial credit for going halfway through type deal. Um, you either graduate or you don't. Um, if you go in to sit down for an interview for your, your new job, your new career, and they say, well, did you graduate college? And you go, well, I got halfway through. They're going to say, get out of my office. And they're going to take the next candidate that actually graduated. So it is important that you understand going into this, that you need to reach the finish line. It's kind of an all or nothing deal. So your attitude needs to reflect that. And you need to think about what you can do to persist through the struggles and challenges that you're going to face. Now, um, I am here to help you with that. That's part of my job as your student success coordinator is to be here to help you through the struggles that you will inevitably face. So you're not alone. Your professors are going to be there. Your advisors are going to be there. So we're going to talk about some more of this. But right now, you need to make sure that your attitude going into this is I'm going to make sure I get this done no matter what. OK, we're going to talk about some of this. So first things first, uh, financial aid. Uh, this is something that probably most of you have already completed. And if not, you're working with your enrollment counselor to finish. Um, your financial aid is also known as your FAFSA. And this is how pretty much most to all of you are paying for school. Um, I don't know anybody that's paying out of pocket. So this is your money for school, guys. It's very, very important that you understand your financial aid. Here's some things to, to know about your FAFSA. Number one, your financial aid needs to be completed once per year. So this is not like a fill this thing out one time and then you're good to go for the next four years. This has an expiration date every year. So you need to fill this out once per year, which sucks. FAFSA is not fun at all and it's kind of a pain in the butt, but um, it's how you're paying for school. So it's very, very important that you make sure you complete this once a year. Now, We'll remind you when the deadline is. The financial aid office at OPSU will remind you when the financial aid deadline is. Um, but just keep in mind that this is something that you have to complete. It only lasts for one year. So if you want to go to school the next year, you got to fill out FAFSA again so that you have money. OK, uh, this is how most of you are paying for school. It is highly, highly important. So this is what I was talking about, taking responsibility. Um, you need to understand how your FAFSA works. You need to understand how much money is being given to you and how much is being separated into grants and loans and when you're gonna to have to pay these loans back if you're taking them and what the interest rate's gonna be and things of that nature. Uh, this kind of goes along with the theme of you don't just fill this out and then it's good. You need to understand how much money that you are getting for school each year. The reason for this is because you are all getting a different financial aid package and it's going to be different for all of you. So what that means is that uh, you need to understand how that is going to be applied to your, your schooling and your classes as you go through. Um, sometimes you will run out of money before the end of the year. I've seen it happen. And so it's important that you make a call to the financial aid office once every two or three months or so and call up the financial aid office and say, how much money do I have left? Um, how many credits do I need to be taking to qualify for that money? This is part of taking responsibility for your education is understanding how the funding is going to work and making sure that you're on top of this. I have had students in the past who fill this out once at the beginning of the school year, and then they never keep up with it and they just keep taking classes. And then the next school year rolls around and they find out they have a balance because their financial aid didn't cover some of the last classes that they took. So Long story short, this is part of what I mean by taking responsibility. You are responsible for being on top of your financial aid and understanding how much money you're getting and how it's being applied to your schooling. Um, I, I can direct you to the financial aid office. I can answer some very, very basic questions about this, but really uh, you're going to need to contact the financial aid office if you want these details and that's on you. So this is part of taking responsibility for your education. Um, let us know if you have questions, issues, concerns, things like that. We want to know and be involved as much as we can. But, you know, essentially, we're going to tell you to call the financial aid office. But, you know, please work with me. Let me know. That's my job. I'm here to help guide and advise you on these, these different things as much as I can. So if you're having issues with your financial aid, let us know. And then for some reason, I have them going again. Nobody knows why. All right. So uh, first step is completed, right? We've completed financial aid. You understand how much money you've got for school. 
uh, the next step is going to be registering for classes. So in high school, uh, you didn't have to do any of this, right? I was in charge of your classes. All you had to do was blow up my phone and be like, hey, Race, I'm done with financial math. I need another class, please. And then I would put it up for you. Um, in college, you are responsible for registering for your own classes. Now, what does this mean? Um, what it means is that you're going to have someone known as an advisor at OPSU. They are going to be the ones that are giving you your schedule. So they're going to email you and say, here are the five classes that you need to take for this, this semester. And then it is up to you to actually physically go into the system, type in those classes and click register. So somebody's gonna guide you through the schedule. They're going to say, you need to take these five, but it is up to you as the student to actually physically go in and add the classes for yourself. Um, that's what is known as self-registration. So you're gonna have someone to guide you, but you have to actually do it. Uh, the way this is gonna work is you're just going to email your advisor. Um, Ty Stevens is probably gonna be the advisor for most of you. And you're gonna email Ty at the beginning of the semester and just say, hey Ty, I need my class schedule. He'll email you back with five classes that you need to take. And then you'll go on to the website and type these in. We'll take a look at this in just a second, but that's how the registration process is going to work. Now, keep in mind, I'm gonna throw a lot of information at you here in the next little bit, and it might seem overwhelming, we are here to guide and hold your hand through this. Uh, we're going to make sure that you understand how to do this. If you have questions, you can reach out. Um, a lot of times the enrollment counselors that are helping you with these steps will jump on a video or a phone call with you and walk through this with you step by step. So this is just kind of a general overview. I know it can be very overwhelming and confusing. We're here to assist with that. So if I keep going through all this, you know, a lot of information and stuff and you're kind of freaking out, that's normal. Um, and don't worry, we're here to help. Um, and then finally, finalize registration. So I have a very short guide on what this looks like. Uh, basically, I'm not gonna go over this whole thing, but you're gonna go onto the OPSU website. Um, you're gonna log in. You're gonna have to go to this little tab that says student and then go to student profile. And then there's some other steps, but essentially you're just going to type in uh, where it says like registration and planning. You're going to type in the classes that you got. Um, I can send you this guide. We have a whole step-by-step -step part, but essentially you're just going to type in the little class uh, number here. You add it and then you click register and it's going to register for your, for your classes. So it sounds scary, but I promise all together, all in all, um, the whole registration process usually takes about five or 10 minutes once you get down to it. You get your email, you type in the classes, you click register, you're done. Um, this is one of the things that you do need to do early. In college, uh, your classes have a finite amount of space, which means that they're not unlimited. Um, if you do not register for your classes on time or early, they might fill up. And when you go to register, it's gonna say class is full. You need to be put on a waiting list. And so this is one of the pieces that number one, you need to take responsibility for. And number two, you need to start early on. If you're trying to register for your classes three days after they've started, you're gonna have a really bad time and um, you're gonna be behind on your assignments. And so what you wanna do is register for your classes about a week or two, or maybe three weeks before they start. We'll help you with this, uh, but this is just another piece that you need to make a little mental check note of and say, okay, I need to do things early in college. You know, I need to be planning ahead. We're kind of taking the next step here, guys, and it involves more responsibility. The other thing that I highly, highly recommend you do is jump onto the OPSU website and just play around with it. Um, you guys are now a part of a community, okay? And you're going to be in this school for two to four years, depending on your degree. That's a long time. Uh, you're now a part of this college, and it comes with a bunch of perks. Um, a lot of what your tuition is going towards is a lot of this extra stuff. Um, you have access to all sorts of different academic resource center and accommodation and counseling, things like that. There's a whole library of research and knowledge and um, different resources for you to use. You guys are now a part of the Aggie team. So like you have a whole team with your college now. You always see people, you know, wearing their like college gear. Uh, even after they graduated, it's because you're part of this community now. 
And I highly recommend you take advantage of that. Part of what you're doing in college is uh, integrating yourself into this new community, making friends, making connections, doing things like that. And OPSU has a lot to offer. So when you have some time, go to the main OPSU website, jump around, click on stuff, play around, see what it looks like, uh, familiarize yourself with this uh, with this website, because you're going to be here a lot. You know, they've got a whole calendar for you. If you're interested about the schedule, they've got a little tech help thing down here at the bottom. They have jobs if you're interested in getting a job. Um, they have a whole personal directory if you need to contact the staff. Like there's a lot here. Uh, familiarize yourself with it when you get a chance. Um, hey, guys, uh, just so you know, I'm putting some comments in the, the messages. So make sure to be reading those. I like put in like what advisor you guys should have and i know that some of you guys just had your diplomas um processed so you will be hearing from your enrollment counselor about enrolling tomorrow most likely so if you haven't already enrolled you will be doing that this week okay yep and we got some time uh the classes do not start until october 17th so we have about 10 or 11 days so if you're not enrolled yet or there's still pieces that you need to figure out don't worry uh, that's part of what we're going to be doing with you over the next you know, two weeks or so. Um, so we're kind of going down our checklist. You've got your financial aid done, right? Your funding is in place. You've registered for classes and you have your class schedule. You're all set up and ready to go. The next thing that you're going to be doing is ordering textbooks. And this is another, uh, this is another piece of the responsibility puzzle. <laughs> it's a horrible puzzle. Um, <laughs> the responsibility puzzle. So you're gonna order your textbooks, okay? Um, in high school, you did not have to do this, right? I just signed you up for classes, you took them, everything you needed was right there online, ready to go. In college, this is gonna be a little bit different. Um, for each class that you take, you need to order a textbook for it. Um, this can happen several different ways. First of all, to pay for these textbooks, uh, you have what is called a voucher code. What this is, is this is going to be a little code that I can give you so that when you order your textbooks, when you go to check out, what it's going to do is actually charge the textbooks to your financial aid instead of asking you for like a credit card or taking it out of your personal checking account or whatever it is. Uh, OPSU is one of the only colleges I know of that actually does this, but they allow you to charge your textbooks to financial aid so that you don't have to pay for them out of pocket, which is really, really cool. So we're gonna get you this voucher code. Um, you guys don't need to memorize this right now because I'm throwing a lot of information at you, but just so that I put it out there, you have $500 in each voucher code each semester to charge your textbooks to, which almost always covers the entire thing. Um, when I say that they charge this to your financial aid, what that means is that they are, uh, it's still coming out of your like grants and your loans and things like that. So it's not free but you don't have to pay it with your credit card. Um, if you're confused about that, we'll go over that in a little bit more detail with you personally. Um, I don't wanna to spend too much time on that, but long story short, you can charge your textbooks to your financial aid. Um, you have two options for your textbooks. Number one are eBooks. And these are essentially, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. They're electronic textbooks. Um, if you own an Amazon Kindle or you read textbooks like on your tablet or something, it's basically the exact same thing. Um, these are just gonna be textbooks that you can access through your computer. Uh, ebooks are emailed. So if you choose to get an e textbook, it's gonna go directly to whatever email you put in when you check out. So you're checking out your textbooks, you click, I want the e textbook, um, you put in your email. Five minutes after you click the pay button or whatever it is, it's going to show up in your email. Um, the number one question that a lot of students have is, which is better? Should I get an e-textbook or should I get a physical textbook, which is one of these guys? To be honest with you, it does not matter. Um, you can pick an e-textbook. I personally like them because they're a little bit more easy. Uh, you don't have to get anything physical that you have to carry around and keep track of or that can get damaged. They come to your account instantly. And if you are like renting them or whatever, they just kind of uh, take the access off and you don't have to ship them back. If you get a physical textbook, they do have to be shipped. And this is part of the start early theme where you need to order your textbook early 
if you're getting a physical one because they have to actually put it in the mail and send it to you. Um, if you order your textbook on the first day of class, you're going to have a bad time because it's not going to get there for another week and you're going to miss out on a whole week of work that requires this book. So this is another thing that you need to do early. Um, a lot of my students prefer the physical book because they like to have something they can touch and highlight and mark and just it makes it easier for them to physically read. If that's you, totally fine. Honestly, there is no difference between ebooks and physical books aside from like ease of use and access. So whichever one works better for you, um, just as a hint, typically ebooks are cheaper. Uh, they cost less money because they're not actually printing something physical. They just send you like a PDF that you can scroll through and you can always highlight it on your computer and stuff like that. Uh, physical books typically cost more money. So you have two options. Doesn't matter which one you can pick. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you have your books. That's kind of the overreaching goal here. And it's up to you. Again, this is a responsibility thing. You are responsible for ordering your textbooks. Nobody's going to do it for you. So you got your financial aid done. You've registered for classes. And then you need to go in and order your textbooks and make sure that those are ordered. Get them early. It's kind of the theme here. We're taking a step up. Um, I'm going to show you what this looks like. So you might say, Rates, what does ordering a textbook look like? So you're going to go to the bookstore, which you can reach from this website. The bookstore looks like this. It's basically just one big giant search bar. Um, you're going to get a class schedule that looks something like this, where you're going to have a number, you're going to have a little uh, like class tag, and it's going to tell you the title of the class. I didn't copy the titles, but this is like biology, intro to biology. And this one says CJ because it's like criminal justice. This one, COM, is like communication basics, stuff like that. Uh, humanities, 2000. So anyways, you're going to get a class list that looks like this. You have about five of them. And this is what it's going to look like when your advisor has you register for these classes. So when you get this, you're just going to type these into the little registration thing. Just literally copy and paste those numbers and click register. That's how you're going to register. And kind of the same thing when you go to look up these books in the bookstore. You're going to start with this little guy right here, the, the one with the title, the bio. And we're going to type it in right here. And let's just see what pops up. Okay. Uh, it has pulled up a lot of different little options. Now, this is where the second number is going to come in handy. This is called your course registration number, CRN. You don't need to know the title of that. All you need to know is that you want this version of the class. 20332. So let's go see if there's one of those around. Okay, doesn't look like there is. So we may want to contact the professor in this case. Let's try another one. I'm going to copy this in. Nothing found. Interesting. I wonder if these class, I copied these off a report. I wonder if these classes got moved. That's again. This time. Okay. So we're going to click on the, the registration number that matches and it's going to pull up a book for us for our class. <laughs> of course. This one, uh, this one is gonna tell you what the book is. Um, here's what you need. You may look at this price. This is why we have the voucher code. Um, so you're gonna order this book and it is going to give you a couple of different options for it. Uh, let's try another one. Essentially, the, the main point that I'm trying to get out here, guys, is looking up your books is really this, just this easy. Just put these numbers in, see what pops up. This is the one. Boom, here's your textbook. It gives you a couple of different options. You can either rent it, you can get the ebook, or you can get it from Marketplace. We'll talk about that just a little bit later, but you're just gonna click add to cart and then you know add all your books and check out. But essentially looking up and ordering your textbooks is really just this easy. You just take these, you know, take these numbers that you're given that are going to be emailed to you, pop them into the bookstore search, and away you go. Guys, I would probably say for this first term, 
you'll probably want to get mostly ebooks if you can, if not all, because um, especially those of you who just recently finished high school, like there's only a couple weeks. So if you do get regular books, definitely make sure they get there by the 17th. And if not, I would recommend getting ebooks for this term at least. But in the future, definitely you can get regular books and, and do it that way. But just make sure that you get them on time so you don't fall behind on classes. Yep, super important. Uh, the biggest theme is do stuff early. So um, I'm actually glad uh, she brought that up because one of the things I want to talk about before we go on real fast um, is kind of what a bachelor, bachelor's degree or an associate's degree really is and really means, in my opinion. Um, part of what you are doing when you graduate college and you show that you have that degree is showing that you have completed the necessary steps uh, to being a responsible college graduate. And what I mean by that is, if you've not noticed, you've got a lot of stuff that you're now responsible for keeping track of. When you show up with a bachelor's degree in a job interview, part of what that means, part of what that piece of paper means is not only that you are knowledgeable in psychology or criminal justice or business or whatever it is, it also means that you were able to dedicate yourself to something for four years or two years and that you were able to be responsible on time and get done what you needed to get done. Um, it's kind of like an adult certificate, basically. Um, this is why that sometimes you can get a job with a bachelor's or an associate's degree outside of your chosen field because uh, employers will look at that and say, okay, I know this person was able to show up on time for four years, get done what they need to, and persist through and, and dedicate themselves to something. I understand that this piece of paper means that they were you know, responsible for four years for doing all these different pieces. That's, I mean, real world advice, that's part of what a, a bachelor's degree or a college degree means. It means that you were responsible, that you took the steps that you needed to. It shows that you can be an adult that you can be trusted with responsibilities and decisions. That's part of what it means, to be honest with you. The other part is your skill set and knowledge, where it says I'm an expert in psychology or criminal justice or whatever it is. But the, a large part of it is just showing that I have you know, dedicated myself to something and that I can be responsible. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of part of why a college degree means what it means, is because you're, you're not going to get your hand held through all of this. Uh, it's gonna, a lot of it's going to be on you. So that's part of what that means. Okay, um, you know what? Let's take a really, really quick break. Questions about what we've covered so far real fast. This is the time for you guys to come off of mute uh, real fast if you guys have questions that you would like answered for the next two or three minutes. Uh, the question that just came up, is there a certain app you have to download? No, for the eBooks, they will email them to you. So oh, yeah, for the you book don't, yeah, they'll just email them directly to you if you get the ebooks. So that's the nice part because you get them right away and you don't have to worry about shipping or anything like that. And you're already doing the classes on your computer anyway. So, you know, keep that in mind. Yep. So no, no app, no like Amazon, no Kindle, no nothing like that. Um, if you get the ebooks, they do just come straight to your email. And then if you get them physically shipped, you know, they'll come in the mail. But no, there's no app that you need for the books. There is an app that you are going to want for the classes, and we're going to cover that next. But that I'm going to um, send you some resources in the chat as far as like time management, like study skills type stuff like that you can save and bookmark on your computer to kind of help you. Because honestly, like in my opinion, time management is going to be like the biggest thing in this process. And race is going to go about like go over that soon. Um, and so really pay attention to that and think about like when you're going to be able to find time in your schedule. Cause that's honestly like the biggest thing that we hear from people as far as like, that's the biggest struggle. Um, so definitely save these resources I'm going to send in the chat and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Yep. And that time management thing uh, goes right along with what I was saying previously, where part of your bachelor's degree shows that you can manage multiple tasks and your time all at once. That because, you know, I, I know a lot of you have kids and are trying to work full time jobs. And now now you're trying to go to school, too. And part of what you do when you graduate is you have a certificate that says I can manage my time like a boss. I can juggle three or four different things at a time and complete them all. And that makes you a valuable employee, not just for you know your chosen field, but just across the board. 
part of what your degree means is that I can be trusted with different tasks to get them done on time and with time management skills. So um, we do have a lot to go over. So if you have other questions, please keep writing them. Please let us know, but we're gonna continue on real fast just because I, I have so much I have to get through. So um, accessing your courses, they are going to be through a different system than what you had at Graduation Alliance. And we're gonna look at it. Uh, your courses will not be available until the first day of class. So the first day of class for you guys is October 17th. That is when your courses are first going to pop up. So even if you were to register for your classes today, you won't see them like pop up on what is called Canvas. Your new class access portal is called Canvas. Uh, you won't see your classes pop up on Canvas until October 17th, which, by the way, is a Monday. Um, we're going to talk about the syllabus as we go through this next part. And then it's very important that you read your class emails and announcements. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. Um, we're going to go back to my little, my little chart here. To get to your classes, you're going to start out at Oklahoma Panhandle State University, their main, uh, their main homepage right here. I would bookmark this if I was you. Um, you're going to be here a lot. So find this website, bookmark it. What you're going to do is click on the upper right hand corner right here where it says my OPSU portal. So you're going to go to the main website, just the home page, and then in the upper right hand corner, it says my OPSU portal right here. And when you click on this, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is log in. Um, I'm not going to do this because nothing pops up for me because we're working on a couple different things on our end, but I do have a little picture. So you're going to log in right here. And when you log in, it's going to take you to a page that looks exactly like this. So you type in your information and it takes you to a page that looks exactly like this, okay? So one more time, just so you guys know, because this is how you access your classes. Home page, click on my OPSU portal, type in your information, and then it's gonna take you to this page. And all you do from right here is click on this little P right over here. It's kind of hard to read. I'll try zooming in. Um, it says Aggie Scholars Online Classroom. I know that's hard to read, but it's this little P over here on the right. If you click on this, it will take you to your classes. So it's really, really easy to get through. Um, it's just this little P guy right here. So one more time, because I get a lot of students often have questions about how they access their classes. Homepage. Log in up in the upper right through my OPSU portal. Type in your information. It will take you to this page and then you just click on the P, okay? That's how you're gonna access your classes. Now, drum roll, please. This is what they look like. When you get into your classes, it's going to look like this. Um, I don't have access to classes because I'm not with OPSU, but my school, the University of Utah, used Canvas, and it looks exactly the same as what you're going to have. So imagine this just has a little P up in the corner. That's going to be the only difference. This is what Canvas looks like, okay? Um, when you have classes, it's going to, I mean, if you guys notice, it's going to look really similar to what you were doing in Graduation Alliance. You have your dashboard. You have your little course tab. You have, uh, you know, like a calendar and some inbox and other things like that that are all very, very similar. When you have classes, it's going to have a big picture of the class right here. I don't have any because I'm not enrolled in any classes currently, but they're going to pop up right here. You can just click on them. It'll take you to your class or you can go to courses. Uh, some other things to be aware of. There is a to-do list right over here in the upper right-hand corner. So when you have assignments due, it's going to pop up with little tabs that say, hey, you have something due in two days. Hey, you have something due in three days. Hey, you have a test coming up on Sunday. Um, it's gonna pop up all right here. When you get feedback from your assignments, it's gonna pop up right here. Uh, this to-do list was my savior. When I would log in to my classes, this was the first thing that I would look at and say, oh crap, I have an assignment that I forgot to do tonight. I'll jump on and do that right now. Um, Let's take a look at what a course looks like. I can access my previous courses. Uh, this one is a good one. 
So when you click on a class and you open it up, it's going to look like this. First thing it's going to do is take you to a home page. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's probably going to have a nice little picture. This was the psychology building at my school. Um, it's going to have some kind of really basic introductory information here on the home page. Um, but it's going to take you and open up a second menu that looks like this. Um, there's, there's a few different things, uh, announcements. This is, uh, your professors are going to talk to you throughout the class, right? They're going to give you different updates. Like, uh, here she said, Hey, here's the exam guide for, uh, here's the study guide for exam three, just study. Uh, she said, Hey, grades have been updated. Uh, Hey, here's, you know, some data that I found, like check your announcements. Your professors are going to talk to you. That's all this tab is. The first thing I would do when you get into a class is click on this button right here that says syllabus. Uh, for those of you that do not know, a syllabus is essentially like a cheat code guide for how to do a class. Uh, in high school, all of your classes were very, very similar. They all pretty much function the exact same way, right? Uh, they went for three weeks. Um, they had about 30 assignments a piece. Six of those assignments were like handwritten activities that the professor had to kind of grade and the other 23 or 24 or whatever were quizzes, right? And that was the same across the board for whether it was math or English or science or social studies, whatever it was, that was how your classes functioned. In college, this is gonna be different. Every class that you take is going to be structured differently. And uh, this might sound like a pain in the butt right off the bat, but it's because in college, your classes are designed around the subject that you're taking. So for instance, if you're in a math class, you probably won't be writing any essays at all. What they're gonna do is give you 50 quizzes and probably three tests to take because they don't care about writing in a math class, right? They just, they just don't care. Inversely, when you take an English class, they probably won't give you a bunch of little quizzes with like 10 questions a piece. What they're gonna do is have you write, you know, six or seven essays over the course of the entire class because they're more concerned with your writing and reading and, and literary composition and things like that. So your classes are all gonna function differently depending on the subject. So this is where the syllabus comes in. You should read this when you start your classes. The first thing you should do on Monday when your classes load up is go in and read this syllabus because it's gonna tell you all about what you're doing in the class. So let's look at this. Course introduction, um, here's how many credits this class is worth. Here's the title of this class. Here is the professor teaching this class and these impressive degrees that she has. Here is her office on campus. This one doesn't really apply to you guys because you're online. Here's her email. If you ever need your email for your professors, it's going to be in the syllabus. Um, the course description. They're going to tell you what you're doing in this class. So if you are like, why am I taking something called cognitive psychology? What is that? There are two main goals of this course to help you learn more about your own thought processes and how they work or don't work in my case, and to provide you with an understanding of the issues, methods, and theories in the field of cognitive psychology. Okay, so I know now that this class is going to teach me about how I think, which is, is, this is a cool guy. This was a cool class. Um, the course objectives, you know, describe, here's what we want you to be able to do after you are done with this course. Describe key concepts, develop a working knowledge. I'm not going to go through all of this because it's it's a lot, but this is kind of a breakdown of what the class is happening. Uh, required materials. Here is the textbook that you need for this. Make sure you have that. Uh, you are responsible for the material provided in the recorded lectures. So she's telling you that she's going to record some information and you need to be aware of what that's what's happening. Do you need to contact the professor? Here's how you do it. Um, you can see, guys, that the syllabus is just a breakdown of how the class is going to work. Here's what I want from you. Here's what you're going to be doing. Here's some information about all of it. Here's how grading works. This is important, too. Uh, you have in this class, this is what, what something I, that would leap out to me. You have three exams that are worth 75% of your grade in this class. Think about that for a second. This means that if you miss one of these exams, you're in a really bad spot for this class. So this would jump out to me and say, okay, I need to know when these exams are. I need to study for these. And these are really important. What I'm really trying to say here, guys, is if, if I can just be honest with you for a second, 
missing these exams or putting them off to the last minute or saying, oh, I forgot about that isn't going to fly in this class. So, you know, this is what I'm saying, where you take responsibility and do things early. This would be a class that this would jump out to me and say, okay, exams are pretty much all of this. I can't miss the exam. I'm not going to be able to turn it in late. Like this is important. Okay. So I don't want to spend too much time on this because we have a lot of stuff to go over still. Uh, but you can see that the syllabus is kind of a breakdown of how things are going to work in each class. Um, you have an assignment tab over here that will tell you all of the assignments that you got going on in order. Uh, so, you know, it'll kind of start and you can go through, it'll tell you when they're due and this will pop up on your to-do list. Um, it's got a couple of different things. You can look at grades too, is another way to do this. If you ever are wondering what your grade is in a class, they have a button for it right here. And they'll tell you, you know, here's your score, here's out of zero. These are practice quizzes, so they didn't actually count, but like um, my first activity, I got one out of one, nailed it. Uh, you go through and you can see your grades here. My first exam, this is a good example. My first exam, I got 38 out of 50, which was not super great considering it was worth 75% of my score. So I knew that I needed to get my, my grade up with my exams. You can keep track of that here. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it'll show you your overall grade. So it'll break it down for you. I nailed my thought paper because I'm good at writing. That's kind of my strong suit. Um, exams, not so much. So I needed to improve there. My total grade for this class ended up being an 84%, which was actually kind of low because I was trying to get a high GPA. So you can check this out right here. Um, it'll break it all down for you. It's also right up here. You know, there's lots of different places you can check your grades. This is another part of the take responsibility aspect. Keep up with your grades. I would check my grades like every single day uh, because you don't want to like turn in five assignments and figure out that you did them all wrong and then just keep doing assignments wrong. So you're responsible for checking your grades. Um, that is the basic overview of Canvas. There's some more buttons that you can click on down here that are not as applicable, but you'll go through some of those. The other thing I wanted to show you is that you do have a handy calendar function. So if you are more of a visual learner, your assignments are all going to pop up right here. You can see it. So let's see, what is today? The sixth uh, Thursday. So let's say we start class next week. You can not only put in your own events, but the, the assignments are going to appear here. So let's see. Let's just pretend your first class has an assignment. It'll pop up right there. Okay. Um, maybe if you want to add something for yourself, that's like study for exam today. You can put this in on your personal calendar. This is just your calendar and it'll pop up on your to-do list. Check this out. Boom. This is what your to-do list is going to look like. So if you have an actual assignment due in your class, as soon as you log in, the first thing it's going to do is pop up right over here. Okay, cool. I have an assignment due this upcoming Monday, October 10th at 12. And then October 12th, I need to study for my exam. So use these scheduling tools, you guys. They're super, super critical in keeping track of your assignments because it, it will get overwhelming. You guys are working. You guys are taking care of your families. You guys are trying to keep up with two or three classes at a time. It gets overwhelming. Use these tools that they're, they're there for this exact kind of purpose so that you can schedule things, so that you can break down how your classes and your life needs to work around school. And we're going to talk about that really fast here. We're just about wrapped up with this portion. You have an inbox too for Canvas, so your professors are going to talk with you. Uh, keep track of this, okay? Um, here's the other thing I would do. Explore this. When you get a second, you know, on Monday when your classes load up, take an hour and just click around. Look at this stuff. Click on things. See what happens. Uh, familiarize yourself with this dashboard. This is where you're going to be spending your time in your classes, okay? Guys, the only thing I want to add um, is sometimes the calendar has like final due dates of like bigger assignments and they don't have like smaller discussion things listed. So make sure you also use the modules like Race mentioned, because that will sometimes show the smaller assignments and then you can add those to your calendar so you can keep up with everything. So use a combination of the modules and the calendar to make sure that you're completing everything. Um, yeah, and your syllabus, you guys, will break there, almost every single course I've ever taken. 
will walk you through what they want you to do. In the very first assignment, they're going to say, here's how this class works. Um, you know, let's walk through this. Let's do this together. So like there's there's different pieces um, that they will show you to walk through this. So take some time, get familiar with it, and please, please, please read the syllabus. I know it's boring. I, I will tell you that till the day you die, this syllabus is boring and it's hard to get through, but it is so important for you to read and understand how this works. Uh, and I, it'll, it'll do you so much good. So um, that's, that's kind of Canvas where you do have to move on because I have a bunch more stuff to get through. Um, so deep breath. Uh, now we know kind of what the classes look like. We know the steps that we're going to take. We're going to, you know, get our financial aid in order. We're going to register for classes. We're going to order our textbooks and then we're going to start. Um, so these are kind of the steps we're following. Now, this is really, really important. So take a deep breath, refocus. We've got about, you know, 15 minutes left or so, maybe 20 if I push it. Um, so we're almost done. So kind of refocus in, uh, dropping classes. Um, before you drop a class, there's some things you need to think about. Number one, is it past the refund deadline? You have one week. So your classes start on October 17th. On October 21st, that Friday, the refund deadline ends. And if you choose to drop a class in like week three or four, you are going to be charged for it. And what that means is that you're not going to get credit for the class, but you're financial aid is still going to pay OPSU a thousand dollars for that class. So like if you choose to drop a class in week two or week three, you are essentially burning a thousand dollars that you don't get anything back for. You're gonna have to start the class back over. You don't get credit for it. And it shows up as a W on your transcript. So think about this. You know, if you're thinking about dropping a class, is it past the refund deadline? I'm going to skip prerequisite. Uh, Think about though why you really want to drop the class um, and this goes back to what i was saying earlier are you stressed are you overwhelmed are you behind these are things that you need to work through everybody who goes to college in your position is stressed and overwhelmed everybody has kids and a family that they're trying to take care of and work a full-time job that's just part of the deal the difference between people that graduate in the same position and people that drop out are the ones who will work through these problems. And I'm just, I'm, I'm being honest with you, not to scare you and not to like yell at you, but because I see it time and time again, and I want to prepare you for this, you guys, you're gonna have some struggles. You're gonna hit points and times where things get tough, where you feel overwhelmed, where something might happen, you might lose your job or your home, or you might get sick, or you might have to go to the hospital and you have to, have to, have to work through these things. If you quit every time something happens, you won't make it through college. It, that's just not how it works. So I want you to mentally prepare yourselves right now, whatever that looks like for you, whatever steps you need to take to say, okay, I know things are gonna get tough. And when things get tough, I want you to think, okay, Race told me this is gonna suck and that it was gonna get tough and that's happening right now. Go cry for 15, 20 minutes, whatever makes you feel better and then come back and say, okay, Ray said that I, I need to work through this and that this is normal. So that's what I'm going to do. I want you to think that, those thoughts because it's going to get hard. Um, will it impact your financial aid? If you are continually dropping classes, eventually the government's going to stop giving you money. If you drop a class every single term and semester and you're not completing them consistently, they're going to stop giving you money because you're essentially wasting it. Uh, and so, you know, you need to think about if you're dropping a class, how's it going to affect your money? And then finally, uh, talk to me. This is my job is to help you guys with this. And when it does get tough, I want you to call me and say, Race, I'm stressed and overwhelmed. I'm working too much and I don't know what to do. I can help you work through these things, but only if you talk to me. Okay, so dropping classes, you need to think about the consequences. This is part of the taking responsibility theme is that we're taking a step up. We're kind of entering the big leagues now, okay? Uh, when you sign up for a class, you need to complete that class. We're going to skip the holds. We're going to skip most of this. Basically what this means is that you guys need to keep up a good GPA. Um, what this really means is that we're expecting you to get A's and B's for the most part. If you get the occasional C or D, that's okay. 
Um, but if you are consistently getting a C or a D in every single class, that's going to be a problem. Uh, eventually, OPSU will put you on academic suspension or probation because you're not getting good enough grades. So it's really important that you maintain, you know, really at least a B average is kind of what we're looking at. Um, like I said, if you run into a tough math class or a tough English class and you have to take a C or a D just to pass it, but you pass it, totally fine. This is if you're getting C's and D's for every class, every term, every semester, it will come back to bite you. Um, okay. This is the part that I really wanted to get to. So here's the timeline for your classes, okay? In high school, they were running on a three-week schedule, right? I gave you three weeks for each class, and then we, we reset, and you got another three weeks. Here in college, it's going to run on an eight-week schedule. So we're starting right here. The way this works is they break each year down into semesters. So you have three semesters. We have fall semester. That's now. We have spring semester, and then we have summer semester. And what they do is they take each of these semesters – and they divide them into two terms. And each term goes for eight weeks. So we are right here, right at the tail end of fall one. Um, you might hear it referred to as like fall A or fall, you know, fall B, whatever. We are starting you guys here in fall two, October 17th. So you're going to start your classes on October 17th. They're going to go for eight weeks. And then we're going to start your next classes. And those are going to go for eight weeks. And then we're going to start your next classes, and those are going to go for eight weeks. We're running on an eight-week time frame here. And to answer the question that you might have, you are typically going to be in two to three classes every eight weeks. Okay? Now, um, something that I see students do a lot is they see eight weeks, and they go, oh, cool, I have eight weeks. Like, I have forever, because you just came from three. And that is not the attitude to have about this. What you want to look at this and say is, I only have eight weeks. If I miss even one week, I've missed an eighth of the class. And you don't get to turn in late work in college. And so this is what I mean when I say be prepared and take responsibility. Make sure you're turning your stuff in on time because if you miss a week or even two, you've missed a fourth of the class easily. And it will really, really hurt you. And these classes cost money. You guys, like if you're missing, if you're missing stuff, this isn't just like a slap on the wrist. You're paying money for this. Uh, it's coming out of loans and grants. It's not coming directly out of your checking account, but this stuff costs a pretty significant amount of money. Um, and it's your future too. If you're constantly dropping classes or missing weeks of school, you won't graduate. And that's really what we're trying to do here. So this is how the timeline is going to work. Um, here's what I wanted to really get go over. Uh, is it is a kind of a time management thing to do for this. So let's say that you guys have, um, you guys are, you know, taking care of a family. You have maybe three or four kids and you're working a full-time job. Let's just say it's a nine to five, right? Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week, full-time trying to take care of a family. Um, it's going to be tough, but I have made up a schedule that, you know, and you can make your own schedule if you want, but it, it, it can be done. That's what I'm really trying to show you with this is that it can be done if you use your scheduling and time wisely. So let's take a look at this. Let's say Monday morning, you wake up maybe at like 7, 7.30, okay? This is your time to wake up, get the kids ready, get yourself ready, and go to work. I have an hour and a half here. Maybe you wake up at seven. You have two hours to kind of get your family going, get yourself going and get to work. Then you work from nine to five, right? Normal, normal job. You come home at five and maybe from five to seven, five to eight, this is more family time. So this is when you're going to pick up the kids and take them to soccer practice, make dinner, go shopping, uh, you know, help them with their homework, get them settled in. Between these two slots, you have about four or five hours that you can take care of your family right here. Then seven or eight o'clock rolls around. The kids are kind of winding down, watching TV, kind of settling in for the night. This is your school time. This is when you're going to jump on and work on school for two or three hours a day. Um, maybe you jump on at 11 or jump on at eight and go to 11 and spend three hours here. Uh, but this is where it's going to happen. Okay. Then at 10 or 11, you have maybe an hour of personal time and you may say race that sucks. Like I want more than an hour. And 
unfortunately, you probably may not get that. And that's part of the sacrifice that you're about to make for two to four years is maybe you have very limited time for yourself so that you can have, you know, the next 40 years to have all the time for yourself. This is an investment, you guys, and you're going to be stressed and you're going to be busy. And that's just kind of part of it. And if you want to live, you know, the, the career and life that you want for the next 40 or 50 years for the rest of your lives, then you need to sacrifice now to make that happen. But it can be done. So not only today, like, did you not only take care of your family and work a full time job, but you got three hours of school in. you took an hour for yourself. And then maybe if you go to bed from like 12 to seven, you're still getting seven hours of sleep, which isn't eight. I know. But like, that's pretty good. Seven hours plus everything else, plus an hour of personal time. Now, I know a lot of you may be looking at this and say that looks that looks cool. And it does. Um I promise you, if you spend three hours a day on school, you will find that you naturally have a day off. Like maybe you have assignments due on Wednesday, right? You spend Monday and Tuesday, three hours each day, you get all of your assignments done. Guess what? You're all cut up for Wednesday. You don't have to do school that day. You're done. Maybe your next assignments are due on Sunday. So then you work Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on school. And then Sunday, you're all caught up. Guess what? You get to take that off. If you plan this out, you guys, you can find time to do it all. It's going to be busy. It's going to be hectic and it's going to be stressful. But if you can find ways to navigate it, plan it and make it a priority, you can do both. Um, last thing here with this, I made a night shift one uh, that we'll go through really, really quickly. This is like if you work from like three to 11, like kind of the, the second shift or whatever it is. You wake up at eight, maybe from eight to 10, you are taking care of the family, the kids, laundry, whatever, you know, two, two and a half hour gap uh, from maybe like 10.30, 11.30 to 2.30. You have a two or three hour gap for school before you go to work. And then you go to work from, you know, three to 11, Monday through Friday. That's a 40 hour work week, right? And now you've had time for family. You've had time for school. You've had time for work. And then you come home maybe at like 11, 11.30, spend an hour of time to yourself and then go to bed at 12, 12.30, seven, eight hours of sleep, wake up, do it again. It can be done is I guess what I'm really trying to say with this. Um, so we are almost finished. I got just a couple more things for you and then I will let you go. Uh, this slide is kind of what we've been talking about this whole time, self-advocacy or taking responsibility for your schooling. Guys, nobody can want this more than you. Uh, we want it a lot for you, but we can't log on and do things for you. We can't know if you have questions or need help with anything unless you let us know. Um, or, you know, if you're not answering the phone and don't call us back, I can't, I just can't help you. I, I just can't, there's no way for me to do it. Um, and so we want you to practice responsibility and what is called self advocacy, which means speaking up for yourself. If you have a question, ask it. If you need help, seek out help. Um, you have to take charge of your education here. This is the biggest thing about this transition is you have to be responsible for making this happen. And communication is key. If you need something from your professor, reach out to them. If you have a question about your classes, reach out. It's important. Which is pretty much what this paragraph says. Okay. Um, last thing is just kind of a breakdown of who all these different people are, because I know it gets confusing. So you have your professors, right? These are the guys that are actually in charge of the classes. These are your like direct teachers. You will then have an academic advisor who is the person at the school who is like giving you your class schedule and helping you get through, um, you know, your, your program, essentially. These are the guys that are sending you the classes that you need to register for. Then you have your student success coordinator. This is me. Um, I handle pretty much everything else. So if you have a question, you need some help, you don't know where to go, you're like stuck, you're behind, you are lost, your toe broke, Call 911. That's what I'm going to tell you to do. But like, um, that's kind of what I do, right? I'm like your main point of contact. And then you have your enrollment counselor, who is the person who is helping you get all of this done to start out with. These guys will disappear about two or three weeks into it. And um, you're going to be just dealing with me. But for the moment during this transition, this is kind of your primary person is your enrollment counselor. These are the guys that are going to help you get enrolled into college, register for classes, get your books, stuff like that. Um, 
that's me or yep. Anne Marie or Andy or Jen or uh, Anna or Diane, all those people that you've been working with. <laughs> or Jackie. Jackie, yes, who's <laughs> also on the call. <laughs> Um, this is Ty Stevens. I just wanted to let you guys know that these are real people that you're dealing with on the other end. Uh, he's going to be the advisor for a lot of you guys. He's like the Dean of online college. He's also the psychology and criminal justice advisor. Um, he's a great guy. Uh, you're going to be dealing with Ty Stevens a lot. Most of you will. Uh, so I just want to let you know who he, who he was. Um, finally, to kind of wrap things up here, you guys are all going through this together. Um, you're going to be in a lot of classes together. So don't be afraid to reach out to your classmates as well. Uh, you know, find time to connect with them. That's an important part of all of this. And then finally, you guys, uh, we've reached the end. And the last thing I want to leave you with is that you can do this. Okay. I know I've been throwing a lot of information at you. I know this is really scary. I know there's a lot of things that you maybe don't understand or that are not quite clear to you yet. Um, it's going to be tough. And I know I've said that a lot and I know I keep saying it, but it's only because I want you to be prepared for it. I don't want to like stand here and tell you that it's going to be all sunshine and flowers and roses because it's not. College is hard. And um, that's why it means so much, you guys. And I want you to really think about this. It's going to be hard. And the reason why college is so impactful and the reason why it gets you such high paying jobs is because it's hard. It's because not everybody does this. And so you're taking steps that most of the population doesn't take. And what you have to do is know that you're gonna struggle a little bit and be prepared, whatever that means to you, to be prepared to take on these challenges and work through them and grow as a person. You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. If I can graduate college, you can graduate college. Um, I don't even wanna tell you what I was doing while I was going through college. Um, you can make it. You need to believe in yourselves. We believe in you. That's why we're sending you to college. You have already taken huge steps to come in and you know wherever you were at in your lives to initiate going back to high school and learning that. You guys remember how tough it was to come back and start those first few classes and navigate the portal and make time for school? You guys have already done this. You're just gonna do it again. You've already shown that you can be successful in an online environment. That's why you're here. Um, and so, that's kind of my conclusion to this is I know we went over a lot of stuff. I know I'm telling you it's going to be hard, but you can do it. And we honestly believe that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Some of you have already seen this. If you graduated high school and you already went off and got a way better job than you had before, this is evidence of that. Your kids are going to watch you go to school and then they're going to say, well, I want to go to school. My mom went to school or my dad went to school, whatever it is. You're going to change the world around you by doing college and you can do it. So that's it. I am done yelling at you. And I just, I have to congratulate myself because usually I go about 10 or 15 minutes over and we nailed this right on time. Um, but that's it, you guys. That's what we wanted to kind of go over. Those are kind of the steps that we're looking at. Um, that's what you're going to be doing in college. What questions do we have about, about that? Thoughts? Questions, comments? Guys, if you haven't already, I would scroll through the chat and um, save those links that I sent. I sent a lot of really good things for you guys to save and kind of explained them. So I would, um, I don't know if you guys know how to bookmark things, but there's like a little star up at the top that you can click on and you save the website. It makes it a lot easier for you to find it in the future. But like I sent financial aid information. I sent tutoring information. I sent who your advisors are. So please take a look at the comments. It's going to be your first self -ad advocacy thing that you guys are going to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys do not feel comfortable, yeah, you do, you do got this. If you guys don't feel comfortable asking questions in front of the group, that's okay. Um, but this is something that I would think about as well. If you have questions, most likely everybody else has the same question. Um, you guys are all in the same boat together. And same thing with when you go to your classes in college for the first time. You guys are all kind of starting at the same time. So are your classmates. And so um, if you have questions, you know, feel free to ask them if you would like to know. Uh, no, not this Monday, uh, October 17th. So not this Monday, but the next one, if that makes sense. Mark it on your calendars now. Yep. 
that would be a great first self-advocacy responsibility exercise. Take whatever calendar you have and mark it down. Also, um, if you guys are not in the habit of like writing down your schedules and responsibilities and things like that, I would start that. Get a calendar, um, like start writing things down. For me, I mean, honestly, every day, I don't have it. Uh, every day I would take a notebook and like physically write down my responsibilities and like things that I need to do and like what, what schedules I had. And that really helped me because it was a lot, there was a lot going on. So every day I'd write down like May 26th, you know, like assignment due, do laundry, pay car insurance, like write whatever essay. And that really, really helped me because it's going to get overwhelming sometimes. For sure. Uh, so and also it feels really good to cross things off your list, guys. Like if you make a list and you do something, like you can be like, yes, and cross it off and it feels amazing. So that's another thing that is pretty great about lists. <laughs> that sounds kind of cheesy, but no lie, the dopamine rush from like, like crossing things off and then looking at a completed list at the end of the day is, uh, is an ace. <laughs> Um, what was the last question? So I guess I can't finish the degree in 19 days. No, <laughs> you can't finish the degree in 19 days. Um, that's, uh, that's part of it. Uh, this is a long haul and this is a test of your commitment and your endurance. So no, mm -hmm. you can't do it in 19 days because it would mean a lot less if you could, right? This is a real fast before we kind of close things out. This is the difference between, um, motivation and determination. Motivation is easy, right? Like I've just been giving you a motivational speech for like the last hour and you guys are all ready and raring to go. Determination and consistency is the hard part. You have to keep going six months from now when you're, you know, you're tired and you're stressed. You got to keep going. That's the difference. That's, you know, what really how it, uh, yes, you can dream. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> um, but that's the difference, right? Uh, it's easy to be motivated. It's hard to be determined and consistent. That's what we're asking. And that's what college is asking of you. Uh, what if we finish early? So uh, that is an option depending on how many classes you can take and how many your financial aid will cover. You guys are all getting different amounts of money. So that was something that I would be very aware of is if you want to take extra classes to try and finish early, you need to make sure you have the money in the funding for them. That's going to be that call to financial aid that we were talking about in the beginning. And um, also, guys, the time. Like, we're going to be signing you up for full-time courses. Like, what we send you and recommend to you is going to be full-time so that you can get financial aid. We don't really recommend taking more classes because you're going to then have to be able to spend a lot of time every single day. Like, Race was saying, already you're going to be doing about two, three hours a day to to do these classes so you want to keep that in mind if you put extra stuff on your plate like if you can handle it great but it's it's difficult so just kind of keep that in mind like you are going to be a full-time student with what we're providing you yeah so here's what i'd recommend because i've had students ask this uh before i would recommend starting out with just kind of the standard full-time um see how you do for the first term or two if you are just acing all of your classes and you find that you have a bunch of extra free time, then I would look into extra classes at that point. But this is brand new. Um, start out and see kind of how things are going. So you're going to be in, um, yeah, we can we can talk. You're going to be in uh, two or three classes at a time uh, normally. Um, yep. So it's going to kind of vary and depend, but you're going to be in about two or three classes at a time. Uh, if you do that, and you know you go for two or three semesters and you're like this is easy i got all sorts of time in the world that would be the time to look at kind of taking on some extra responsibilities but these classes cost money they're going on to your gpa so you want to make sure that you ace you want to make sure that you ace them and get a steady foothold first before you take on extra stuff i know you guys want to get it done early i totally do not blame you for that at all um but i'll be honest with you unless you like really 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 blaze through like most of this, it will take you probably three and a half, four years. That's just how it goes. So, but yeah, that goes back to like what race was talking about guys, like this degree and this uh, piece of paper that helps you get all these like great jobs is really a test of like your hard work and perseverance more even than like 
necessarily your knowledge and like capability. Like we work with so many smart students, but a lot of it is about persevering, like he said, through difficult things, staying on task with your assignments, time management. Like I almost think that those are like more important almost like students who work hard and stay on top of this stuff are the ones that are successful. Oh, 100%. Like I have students who are brilliant, who are so good at academics, but they don't stay on top of things. When the going gets tough, I've had students quit who were getting all A's. I have students who are really struggling to get B's and C's that are still in school. And uh, guess what? Those guys are going to graduate and my smart students that quit aren't going to get anything. I, I honestly believe that you will go farther with determination and grit and resiliency than you will if you're just brilliant at everything the first time. In fact, really fast while we're talking about this, my students who get everything right the first time, a lot of times they don't make it through. And you know why? Because the first time that they encounter hardship or something doesn't go their way, they quit because they've never had to struggle before. So you guys that may have had to struggle through classes or had to work really hard at something. Believe me when I tell you, you actually have a leg up on those students because you have grit and determination that you have already learned and it will come in handy. I, I promise you, I promise, promise, promise you. Remember the goal is the finish line. Got to get there. So yeah, these are all excellent questions. We have about five more minutes for questions. And then if you guys want to talk after, um, kind of privately or stick around for a little bit, we'll, we'll do that. And then if you don't have all of your questions answered after that, we'll be in the office tomorrow. Give us a call, shoot us an email. Um, your enrollment counselors are going to be working with you over the next, you know, week or so. So if you have extra questions that we were not able to get to, please don't hesitate to reach out. But we got five more minutes for like the open discussion and then we'll stick around for a little bit longer for the other students that wanted to, to speak. Um, classes will be, they should load up like, like, I don't know if you log on at like six o'clock in the morning on Monday, October 17th, they should be there. Maybe even earlier. I don't know what the exact time is, but when you log on to canvas at, on October 17th, they should be 100% available. Their system probably, I mean, honestly, if you guys really wanted to get into it, their system probably updates at like 3 AM. <laughs> And uh, yes, this is another good point. In college, you should not have any specific times that you need to log on. It should be the same as high school where you had the option to do it at any point during the day. If you run into a class where you have to log on at a specific time, let us know, but it should be the same. These are all great questions. I love this, you guys. Like sometimes the students are not as interactive as, as, as you guys are being, these are excellent questions. This is gonna help you guys a lot. I promise you this is very, very beneficial. We love it. A plus, you guys get an A plus for this webinar. Um, okay, so two questions came up. Uh, Lisa asked, sorry. Uh, oh, available for you, have to go to work. Um, yes, they should be. They honestly really should be on Monday. Like whenever you log on, even if it's five or six o'clock in the morning, they should be there and available. Um, oh, the other thing, you know what? I almost forgot you guys. Uh, you have Canvas that you can download on your phones. Um, there is an app for your schooling right in the store. It's totally free. It's just the Canvas app. And um, I would highly recommend you download that because it will help you a lot. You can access your classes while you're at work or standing in line for the grocery store. Check out the app for Canvas. It's, it's ace. Like I would do it all the time. Uh, your to-do list is like the first thing that pops up when you pull it up. And um, it was so, it was so handy to, you know, just be standing in line and be like, oh my gosh, I have an essay due tonight. I forgot like type deal. So um, super great. And then reaching out to the same peer group. Um, so you guys are all going to be kind of in these same classes. Yep. She's got the can. She's got the app. It looks exactly like that. It's awesome. It's totally free. Um, it will help you so much. You can submit quizzes, read announcements, things like that. Um, if you guys want, we can create a list or send out, you know, some, some messages with some of these students, as far as privacy is concerned, I can't guarantee that everybody on this call is going to want to connect with each other, but we will see what we can do. There are Facebook groups as well. Um, if you guys are interested, there's an OPSU Facebook group 
that I will send you links to that you can join. That is a whole community of students that are exactly like you that are just graduation Alliance students that you can join. Um, if you are interested in like peer group networking, stuff like that. I do believe also through your class through like that inbox section on the left hand side, I believe you can message your teacher and other classmates as well through there. So check that out and see if that's an option. But I think you can do that as well. Because yeah. yeah, you guys are there to help each other too. You guys are going through the same things. Like you guys can if you have questions on stuff, you can talk to each other about it too. Like you can form study groups if you wanted. Like, I mean, you can support each other. Um, and, you know, build each other up, like help each other with motivation and all that stuff, because you guys are all going through the same experience. And, you know, you're, you're going to be working through some tough things and you understand what each other is going through. So definitely communicate with each other if that will help you. Absolutely. And we will do our best to facilitate that as well. Um, maybe we'll take like a list of people that would like to connect and kind of uh, network and stuff. And we'll, we'll connect you guys. Um, in terms of privacy, I can't just guarantee that everybody on this call is going to want to do it. So we'll, we'll work on that and help you get connected there. Um, we got time for maybe two or three more questions before we kind of got to move on and uh, kind of close this out. So what else do you guys have? These have been great, by the way. I think I said that earlier, but like this is this is awesome. Um, we love that you guys ask questions. We, your professors are going to be the same way. They want you to ask questions. They want you to be involved. This is your schooling. You're paying a lot of money for it. This is your future. So like, this is what we want to see as educators. We want to see students that are willing and, uh, you know, involved in their future. This is awesome. So my favorite color is black. If that was something anybody was wondering, I know it was. So I was just going to get that out of the way right now. I have two cats. I enjoy long walks on the beach. Tough crowd. You guys are a tough crowd. <laughs> What's your cat's names again, Reese? Uh, Molly is my first one. She's the she's the big old big old kitty, and then the other one I named Luna because she's little tiny and black, and she's got huge blue eyes. How is the new one? Uh, I put her, I have to put her in my bedroom because she likes to be involved in everything. So when I have to do like these hour long presentations, <laughs> she's great. I love, I love her. She's amazing. Yeah. My cats are always climbing all over my desk and like all that type of stuff during uh -huh. meetings. If I make food, I have to put her away because she's like, she needs to get her face in everything. I have this horrible like green, like nutritional powder that I drink before I go to the gym. And it smells like I just like literally took a scoop of hay out of the barn. It smells awful. And so I let her smell it one time because I was like, you know, she'll hate this, obviously. And she just sticks her whole face in and just starts like trying to eat it. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, <laughs> she's good. Lynn is great. Um, if you guys don't have anything else, we'll close this out. I don't want to take up too much of your, your Thursday night. Um, you guys are free to go for anybody that wanted to stick around. We got about five minutes that we can discuss, uh, things with you privately. If you wanted to, the rest of you, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you have extra questions, please let us know. We're here to help. We're going to get you guys started and, and kind of guide you through this process over the next week or two. Uh, we're here to, we're here to help and you guys can do this. We'll, we'll connect you with each other and make sure that this is a good experience for you. So thank you so much for coming. Um, I appreciate you spending the hour with me. Let us know if you need anything and we will talk with you guys soon. Thanks for coming, guys. Good luck, everyone. Thanks Hope for this the presentation, helped. Race. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Race. Mm. Bye, guys. All right. So, what can we help you with? You're on mute. <laughs> nice to put a face with everybody's name. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So. So what I was saying, um, if I move forward, because, you know, my surgery is going to be in December. Yes. So I've seen there's not a winter schedule, so we don't have class during winter? So, no, you do. It's just, like, weird how they set it up. It's basically, like, you just keep going. Like, you don't – with the way online schooling works is it's, like, when you finish the first seven weeks, then you just go to the next seven